Welcome back guys. In the previous videos we did prove and derived the law of sines. Now for the law of cosines we also started the law of cosines and uh, we were talking I reminded you about when to use it and it's always you have to go back to the previous lessons the previous videos uh, the first uh, uh, four or five videos of this uh, lengthy introduction to uh, trigonometry and we always it's always better to use the law of cosines especially if you're given uh, the the sides this way you go ahead and you start with the largest angle keep that in mind that's not the memorization that's the only thing we need to remember and as for why please refer to the previous lessons and because we said the law of signs pauses a lot of ambiguity and we spoke about when the side is smaller and when the side uh, uh, one side is larger or smaller uh, to the other side compared to the other side and we're going to repeat that now actually right now and we're going to link that to the specific uh, sine and cosine ratios how is that how, how is that linked this law of ambiguity this ambiguity that is paused by the law of sines but before we do that let's wrap up with the law of cosines we said one of the easiest way to if we don't want to memorize it is to think about this uh, largest angle uh, across from the largest side and here we said you know let's call it that's that let it be uh, b side b or angle b as cosine b equaling the other two sides squared a squared plus c squared minus b squared divided by 2ac and this uh, a squared plus c squared divided by 2ac we can remember it as the polynomial a minus c to the uh, squared which equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac so if I think about the largest side squared b squared that equals this polynomial a squared plus c squared minus the other two sides okay a squared plus c squared minus 2ac and then the cosine and most of the time when you use the law of cosine they either tell you use the law of cosine or you have the three sides in this situation you go ahead and you find the angle of the largest side starting with the largest side refer to the previous videos please but in order to keep it in mind not memorize it think of this polynomial of the squared of the other two sides a minus c squared in this situation if you're thinking a squared you know a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc uh, cosine of a in this situation it's b minus c squared that gives us b squared plus c squared minus 2bc okay so just a little link just a little hint so you can uh you know where you don't you don't need to do all these proofs and derivations when you have a problem these just in order for everything to stick in your mind and get linked to the other uh, parts and the other uh layers of of uh uh, trigonometry and mathematics in general okay and then in order to prove it what I did was we took it in acute angle first and we said this is side B this is side across from A is small a across from C is C I drew the perpendicular to uh, uh, BC and I called that uh, point of intersection D and then I went ahead considering that B is the angle that I want to get whether they told me go ahead and get B or whether it's the largest angle or whether it's the only way to deal with it because it's across from that large side B I said cosine B equal BD in a smaller triangle I tried to cut it down into smaller triangle in order to find uh, an element equaling other variables and this same element equaling different variables so I can put these variables you know uh, uh, across from, from each other and that's how this is one of the uh, common sense method of proving something you know not even in mathematics you know in in any scientific field so I said cosine b in a small triangle a d b or a b d equal b d divided by the adjacent side divided by c the hypotenuse 
And then I went ahead and I said in triangle uh, ACD, this other small triangle, what do I have? I have Pythagorean CD squared equal AD squared plus uh, CD squared. And instead of CD squared, I did divide it, CD, I did divide it as a minus because I want to get that minus. Remember, we want to get that minus. That's why I went ahead and I, and I, and I followed this path. A minus C in order to get minus two AC. So that's why I went ahead and I divided a big triangle into two smaller triangles. This way, when I take the longer length and I want to replace it, or the smaller length, I'm, I'm sorry, and I want to replace it, I can go ahead and say it's the largest length or uh, segment length minus another uh, variable or uh, uh, a segment length. So in this situation, I went ahead and I, I said DC or CD equal the large one BC minus BD. And look, I just found out, I just discovered that BD equals what? BD equal cosine of B, the one that I'm looking for, times C. So I all I did was just to replace that. I went ahead and I did this polynomial BC minus BD or A minus c squared equal bc squared plus bd squared minus 2bc bd and then ad plus bd look ad ad plus bd ad squared plus bd squared again pythagorean theorem equal ab squared which is c this is your c so i got my c squared uh, from a b squared and then I left I was left off with b c squared minus 2 b c times b d now b c is your a look at the triangle again b c is across from vertex a it's your a and the other one b d is is what I found out when I divided into two small triangle again I divided into two small triangle to get that minus because when I have a smaller a, a segment length, I can replace it with the largest one minus that other segment length or that other variable. Okay, so it's not really a trick. It's just common sense. When you have something, you want to prove something that has a minus and you can do that, you know, with distance formula. We're going to get to that in the next lesson or with uh, on a coordinate 2D plane or with segment length, you can go ahead and divide. This way, the smaller uh, uh, variable is going to equal the largest variable minus another variable. Okay, that's the whole idea behind this cutting into two uh, right, of course, uh, triangles because the right triangles give you gives you the uh, trig ratios or the trig fun uh, 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 the sine and the cos your sine and cosine. So. Again, all I did was replace BD with cosine of B times C, and there I have it. B squared equal A squared plus C squared, the other two sides, minus 2AC times cosine B. Or you can flip it around and say this, your cosine B equals the other two sides squared, A squared plus C squared minus B squared divided by 2AC. And this here is your the polynomial that we talked about a minus c squared equal a squared plus c squared minus 2ac it's better to again we don't memorize it's better to remember it by saying the largest side or the side i'm looking for in this situation it's b squared b squared equal the other two sides squared a squared plus c squared minus 2ac oh that's the polynomial and the angle cosine and that's the law of cosine of course it's going to be cosine you're, you're using the law of cosine it's not sine okay now i had a question about a very an, another uh question what if the angle is in uh um it's up is obtuse what if i have an obtuse triangle what do we do in a situation like that and we started with that we left off and uh, we're gonna do it on the board i did draw it for you on the board so if uh, you have an obtuse angle, obviously you are in quarter two. So we're going to keep the same angle. We're looking for angle B, okay? So we're looking for angle B, right where vertex B is. And this is A, if you can see it. This is C, 
small a of course across from vertex a small b that's your largest look at it that's your largest side across from your largest angle it's very obvious here because b is obtuse it's over 90 degrees so here you're gonna you know pay attention with me because we're gonna use this to remind you of something very important and to link it to this ambiguity caused by do i use the law of sine do i use the law of cosine now what's cosine of b as i go into uh uh the second quadrant location is second quadrant you tell me it's minus because it's cosine perfect yes it's minus because it's in quadrant two so but let's say it's an angle that you know let's say it's uh um 150 degrees okay what's the cosine of 150 degrees the cosine of 150 degrees is 180 degrees minus 150 degrees it's the reference angle that is going to form so it's cosine of 30 so it's square root of 3 divided by 2 or minus in this situation minus square root of 3 divided by 2 okay so here just remember that and keep it in mind we're going to use it in a few minutes when you have a reference angle you have two solutions the sine of 30 which is a half the easiest one equals the sine of 150. don't forget that equals you know the sine the sine of the reference angle equal the sine of the angle okay so sine of 150 equals sine of 30 equal a half cosine of 150 equal cosine of 30 but you have a minus here absolutely that's the only difference the difference is in the direction but as a value okay as a value you have the same value the difference here with the cosine is when you are in quadrant two with the sine when you're in quadrant two you have the same you come up you have two solutions so when you have two solutions which one do you choose this is when the ambiguity forces itself you know and this is when you have to choose am i choosing the largest one the obtuse one or the acute one and we're gonna do that after this now let's go back here so cosine of b is 180 minus b it's minus cosine of b okay so again i want to divide into something uh small but here as i divide into something small look if i draw a perpendicular from a all the way down to d okay i am i have a big over there i divided into two small triangle in order to say that the small length i believe it was bd equal bc the largest one minus to get that minus two right here i can't do that because i do have the, the largest shape all i can do is just you know come up with a right triangle once i come up with that right triangle i draw a perpendicular from a to bc to line bc and i have a right triangle here in this right triangle what's going on in this right triangle you know uh, if i look at uh i have this angle b right here this reference angle but this reference angle for the cosine is minus so minus cosine b equals the adjacent which is bd you see it here divided by a b the hypotenuse and a b is nothing but c okay so now i have minus cosine of b equal bd divided by c or bd equal a b which is c times minus cosine of b look at that that's beautiful because here i don't have to worry about oh i didn't divide into smaller parts so i can get that smaller length to equal a largest length minus so i can get my minus two that i need i already have a minus so all i do is i go back to what i go back to 
the large triangle now. I use it differently. I don't need to go to smaller triangle. I go to triangle A, C, D, and I say Pythagorean A, C squared equal D, C squared, the whole thing, this whole length from D to C, plus A, D squared. And this D, C squared now, I can segment it. I can cut it and dissect it to get that B, D that I need. And the BD has a minus, don't forget that. So I'm good. So this DC, now I'm going the other way around. I already have a minus. So I go with a plus, but the plus is gonna spit out a minus. So this DC squared equals none but BD plus BC, BD plus BC squared. And that's a polynomial. AD squared, I copy this down. It, Instead of DC, I have BD squared plus BC squared plus 2BD. Now AD squared plus BD squared in that small right triangle that I formed, AD squared plus BD squared is none but AB squared, which is C, that you're given probably because you're looking for B squared or angle B. So you're probably given this one, okay? And I copy down my BC squared. And here I have B, uh, uh, um, BD as I, I get my BD from what I did here. BD is C times minus cosine of B. So BD is C times cosine, this is my C, times minus cosine of B. Okay? And BC is nothing but A. So here I have it, plus 2AC but times minus cosine of B. So I got my minus out again. It did spit out the minus. So in this situation, you have B squared equaling C squared plus A squared minus 2AC cosine of B. And there you have it. You have the minus here. You got the minus by figuring out that BD is an extension in quadrant two. It's not an extension in quadrant one for a cosine. So that's why it's minus cosine of B that equals BD divided by AB and not cosine B equal BD divided by AB. So even if you have an obtuse triangle that extend into quadrant two, of course, you're going to end up with the same, you know, formula at the end. And in this situation, we didn't have to divide into two smaller right triangles because we, because we already have the large triangle. We already have the big triangle. All we had to do is just extend that perpendicular to the line, to line BC, and we got ourselves a small uh, uh, right triangle in quadrant two, okay? And of course, we ended up with the same, um, with the same uh, uh, result and the same formula at the end. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is your the ambiguity that is caused by having two solutions or two angles and you always get two solutions and two angles when you have especially the sine because the cosine you know you get it with the cosine but some student confuse that because the cosine in quadrant two is negative however with the sine in quadrant two the sine is always positive so when you have a reference angle again this as simple as let me refresh your memory because before I dig into this. Sine of the simplest angle, which is 30 degrees, equal a half, okay? What is the sine of 150? You go like this, right? The sine of 150, you go with the reference angle, the terminal side, and the x-axis, this is your reference angle. So this is the 30 in quadrant two now, but it's positive for the sine. And this is your 150. They're both gonna equal a half. And for the cosine, it's you just add the minus sign. So when you start with a law of sine, this is where, when the ambiguity comes and you, got an, you get an angle. The reference angle as well could be the solution. So which one do I choose? Do I choose the 30 or the 150? Do I choose the 60 or do I choose the 120? And this is where the ambiguity come from. Now, let's study it this way. 
let's uh, think about it. Okay, let's say A, side A is six, six centimeters, six units, whatever you want, and B is five. And you're given angle A acute equal 30 degrees. So you're given an acute angle at 30 degrees. And they ask you, what is the number of distinct triangles that can be constructed um, if A is acute? They want, they want you to know that A is acute, okay? So side A, which is six, is across from that A. So the thing that you can think about is that that's all they have given you. They've given you that A equals six, B equals five, and side uh, angle A is acute. They want it to be acute. They want it to be under 90 degrees and they set it at 30 degrees. And the question is, what are the number of distinct triangles that can be constructed with this, with these uh, given uh, uh, values? So how I think about it, you know, I have a side, I have another side, I have one angle, okay? So I do have one angle, but if I come here and I say, I want to find out the law of what? If I want to use the law of cosine. So the law of cosines means I have the angle A, so I go A squared, doesn't work. So if you want to do C squared, you know, equal a squared plus b squared, right? Minus 2ab cosine of c, right? Do you have c? Do you have uh, uh, c, uh, the side or the angle? No. So it's kind of forcing you here to use the law of sine, okay? Now these questions, they do come up not in an ACT or SAT. These questions come up as challenge problems as, you know, at the end of your, um, at the end of the chapters in uh, grade 10 and 11, they come up as um, increase or, uh, you know, strengthen your uh, knowledge or what you have understood. So I look at it as they're giving me two sides. So basically I need to compare these two sides, A and B. So a is larger than B. A is 6, B is 5. Okay, so if I go ahead and I imagine this, I always try to conceptualize, okay? It's almost larger by one degree or one centimeter or one unit. So this is my A, this is my B. So A is larger than B, so it's gonna close up here, right? And this is the C, right? And this is angle C in this situation. Okay, and this is angle A, which is given at 30 degrees, right? Now I have this, they're giving me this as five and this one as six. Now, as long as A is larger than B, I can go ahead and draw and conceptualize this, you know, triangle, but I am forced to use the law of sine, okay? So what do I do? I can go ahead and say sine of A, sine of angle A, which I have, divided by A equals sine of angle B divided by small b. And I can go ahead, sine of A is a half, that's the easiest one because it's 30 degrees, divided by six equals sine of B divided by five. If I do the math, and no need for scientific calculator here, you end up with sine of B equal 2.5 divided by 6, 0. Point, what, did I, what did I have? 0 0.416. Now you need to get uh, the arc sine of this. We talked about that extensively. You have the sine, you need to get the arc sine. You need to get the inverse to swap it, okay? So pre uh, please refer to the previous videos. The arc sine in order to get the angle, the arc sine, of zero here you need your scientific 416 i'm sorry this is six calculator okay it's in radian don't forget that 0 0.4290 radian now in order for me because i'm working with a 30 degrees i have to do that again no memorization you just do your pi a over B equals C over D, and I have it here in radian, 0 0.429, and 
and, and I need this in degrees. The fourth element, you do the math, no scientific needed here, 24.5. So I have 24.5 degrees for angle B. Remember, I did conceptualize it as this. So I have 30 degrees here, 24.5 degrees here. It looks like something that might work. Let me keep going. Now I have two angles and I have two sides. How do I get the, you know, the, the other angle, angle C? That's, you know, just common sense from middle school. 180 minus the other two angles, 30 plus 24.5. And 30 plus 24.5, so that's 125.5 degrees. Now, it's an obtuse angle. Remember what I just, what we were talking about here? This is an obtuse angle. Do I choose this obtuse angle? Remember this? Sine of 30 is a half and sine of 150 is also a half. Do I choose 125.5 or do I choose the reference of 125.5? This is where the ambiguity from this constructional geometry is linked to the sine and cosine. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. If you do this, you can do sine of C again divided by C equal sine of A divided by 